Welcome to our feature clip showcasing production enhancements for SAP Business One Release 9.2. With the introduction of resource functionality, enabling basic production capacity management, we can now monitor complete standard production costing and analyze real production variances with simplification of bomb management and greater flexibility using production orders. We can now define a production standard cost in the item master data. This cost can now be used as a budgeted cost enabling cost comparisons between standard and actual costings or for production variance analysis. The Bill of Materials screen shows the production standard cost data for item components, the cost data for resource components and the production standard cost data for the parent. It supports multi-level Bill of Materials calculation and the item master data production standard cost can be optionally set to the current valuation cost and can also be optionally rolled up through the multiple levels of bill of materials. This is an example of how the total production standard cost is calculated. First we take the item quantity required and we times that by the production standard cost. We then calculate the share of any additional quantity, which is the additional quantity divided by the production size which is then multiplied by the production standard cost and then these two figures are added together to get a total production standard cost. The second update to the production module in version 9.2 is the introduction of a start date at the header level and row level dates. We can now define start and end dates for all components and resources in a production order. In earlier versions, it was only possible to define dates at the document header level, which means there was no option to earmark components and resources exactly on the date required. All row level dates have to be within the header level dates. When changing the header level start and end dates, there is an option to update all row dates according to this. All dates are defined on the production order itself. There's no separate table. There are four different allocation methods on start date, on end date, start date forwards and end date backwards. This will enable you to more easily plan allocation of items and resources for all your production requirements and have greater visibility over individual components required for consumption. The resource capacity window can be used to monitor resource and component consumption and availability. Here in the resource capacity window you can visualize the allocation of production order resources. You can see that capacity is allocated according to available resource capacity and the chosen allocation method. OEC computers assemble and sell custom built computers. In our business scenario, OEC computers receives a sales order for 10 custom built computers. Each custom built computer consists of a computer casing, each engraved with the customer logo, an 8 GB CPU and a 250 GB solid state drive. A production order is created and the appropriate resources allocated. During the production order process, there is a change to an item cost for one of the assembly items and this cost is rolled up to the partner item accordingly. Let's now see how this is executed in SAP Business One Release 9.2. We are now logged in to SAP Business One Release 9.2 and firstly we're going to create a sales order for customer microchips who have just ordered 10 custom built computers. We select our customer and then we select our item number and in this case our item number is 10013 which is our custom computer item. Quantity is 10. The item availability check pops up given that there is actually no items currently in stock because these are custom built computers. And then we define our unit price. We then navigate to the logistics tab and we're going to select this document as a procurement document. Then we define the delivery date, which is expected for the first week in December. 
and now we can add the sales order to the system. Having defined this sales order as a procurement document, this has kicked off the procurement confirmation wizard, which will allow us to step us through the process to create a production order. We click Next. We select our base document, which is the sales order we've just created. We then select all of the base document line items. We then choose our consolidation options, and in this case, there's no consolidation. And then we preview the results. The summary report indicates that the production order has been created for this particular item. Let's drill down into the production order. The first thing we're going to do is drill down into the bill of materials for this item. We can see that this assembly item has been made up of design hours for the design and preparation of the customer's logo for computer etching, other resources such as labour hours and machine hours, and then the computer parts which includes the computer casing, the CPU and the solid state drive. And then finally we've included another resource for the final quality check at the end of the production process. In the Bill of Materials window, some of the new fields include the production standard cost and the planned average production size at the header level. At the row level, we have additional quantity and we also have the production standard cost and total production standard cost. Let's take this resource for example. We've got a quantity of two labour hours and we've got an additional quantity of two additional hours if required at the cost of £80 per hour. In order for you to calculate the total production standard cost, you take the total quantity of two, you times it by the unit price, which gives you a total of £160. You then take the additional quantity of two, you divide it by the planned average production size of 10, and then times that by the unit price of 80. Then you add those two sums together, which finally gives you the total production standard cost of £176. The production standard cost for one of these items has changed since creating the production order. The cost for the computer casing has increased to £80. So we're going to drill down into this item and we're going to change the production standard cost to £80. We navigate to the production data tab and we're going to update the production standard cost. Now we're going to refresh the Bill of Materials document. And as you can see, the total production standard cost for this item has been updated to £80. However, the total production standard cost at the parent level has not changed. So how do we manage the production standard cost at the parent level when there's a price change at the component level? We can always define prices manually on item and or parent level. Parent prices, however, can be updated over multiple levels to the highest parent by using the production standard cost roll-up feature. So now we have updated the cost of the component item. To update the cost of the parent item, we simply navigate to Modules, Production, Production Standard Cost Management, and select the option Production Standard Cost Roll-up. Given we have only got one item that we've updated, you can either define that item here or we can just click OK. If we refresh the Bill of Materials document, we can see that the production standard cost has been updated for the parent item. All items which have been checked include in production standard cost roll-up at an item master data level will be included in the parent cost. Price changes to resource or component prices are reflected instantaneously in the Bill of Material when refreshing the window. If we now navigate to Inventory Reports by going to Modules, Reports, Inventory, and then Inventory Items List. Here, for example, for our computer casing, 
we can see our last purchase price. We can also see our production standard cost. We can also see any price variances and in some cases where we have price changes it might be a good idea to refresh the standard costs to be as close to the actual costs. This way you can better plan and define an appropriate sales price for your items. If we navigate back to the production module and the production standard cost management, we also have an option called production standard cost update. This update feature will let you update the production standard cost from the current valuation cost. In this case, all our items are moving average. So with this functionality, we can update the prices of our components to the ones currently valid. The standard cost feature in SAP Business One Release 9.2 facilitates the comparison of standard costs to actual costs, especially, for example, production processes which take a long time to complete and during this process there could be price changes. Standard costing makes it easier to prepare sales quotations based on the best information available at the time. Now we have reviewed our bill of materials, let's check out the production order. The second main new feature in production is the ability to define start and end dates for individual rows within the production order. We also have a field at the header level which enables us to define a start date, which is often very different to the order date. We then, at a row level, have our start and end dates. We also have the option to define resource allocation types and the actual dates when the resources will be required. There are four options to allocation types. On start date, on end date, start date forwards and end date backwards. The dates are defined manually. And at this stage, there's no connection between the item master data and planning dates, except the default resource allocation method defined in the item master. The default method can always be manually changed on the production order itself. We're now going to navigate to the resource capacity window. Here we can see how the resources have been allocated. For every resource, we have available capacity on a daily basis. If there's not enough capacity available, then this will be allocated according to the selected method until we have consumed all the hours we require to complete the production. Now that we've kicked off the production process, we will be able to fulfill the order for our customer microchips by the specified due date. So in summary, the ability to compare standard and actual costing facilitates budget to actual cost comparisons and production variance calculations. We also have greater visibility and control over individual components required for consumption, being able to define start and end dates, making it easy to plan allocation of items and resources across multiple production runs. So thank you for your time today and check out what's new in our feature clips for SAP Business One, release 9.2.